Hello and welcome back. Today I want to share three big mistakes I made when I was starting out in floristry. I would really love to help you prevent these same mistakes in your business. So before we get started, my name is Chelsea Fuss. I'm a floral stylist, instructor, and designer. I'm the author of Field Flower Vase, Arranging and Crafting with Seasonal and Wild Blooms. I have my own flower school online, Frolic Flower School, where I teach home floral designers and aspiring florists eco-friendly flower design. So you can check it out at chelseafest.com. All right, so let's get into today's video. Okay, so there are three big mistakes that I made. The first one is one that I see a lot of florists making not pricing flower arrangements correctly. It's very tempting, especially when you're creative, to add in a few stems here, a few stems there. Oh, it's a really loyal customer. I want to make this look extra full. Um, but all of those really add up and they can absolutely destroy your business. So when you start out, you need to have a system around your flower inventory, keeping track of what goes bad, and you need to absolutely have flower recipes. And you need to either keep track of the stems or keep track of the bunches that you buy. Another thing that happens is sometimes people take on deliveries and they're buying flowers in bulk when they only have one delivery. and you can't buy flowers in bulk for one delivery. You're not going to put all those flowers in one arrangement and you're definitely not going to be charging for all of those, particularly if you're creating flower arrangements that have like a very textural feel where it's like multiple types of ingredients, okay? So um, this is a huge challenge for many florists. I've seen so many people make this mistake. We're creative. We love to pack the flower arrangements in. Um, full of beautiful blooms and ingredients, but you actually just have to keep track and you need to have a system around it. The best way is to have floral recipes. Also to make sure you are communicating well with your customer. One of the challenges with this is that um, I would say about 80% of customers are actually just not aware how much flowers cost. So as florists, we're constantly educating the public about the cost of growing flowers and unfortunately we sometimes have to explain a lot of people don't understand that when you're pricing your arrangements definitely you're marking up um, the markup is anywhere from three to five times the price of the wholesale flowers of course that's how all retail products are and for some reason people don't think it applies to flowers and so you find yourself just constantly educating customers. So you absolutely have to price your flower arrangements so that you are um, marking up the wholesale flowers, marking up your supplies, including a labor fee and including the cost of doing business, okay? Your transportation, your rent, all of your overhead, all of your business operating expenses have to be included in the price of every single arrangement. And this is why I'm always really encouraging my flower students to start by appointment studios where you're only doing larger orders at first. It's going to make all of this a lot easier, okay? So it's a lot easier to buy in bulk for a wedding or event or a really large order because you will use all the flowers, okay? You don't want to deal with a business model where you have a lot of flowers going bad and a lot of inventory sitting around. This is a perishable product, all right? So the pricing has got to be your number one priority when you're starting out. It is not an afterthought, okay? So don't make pricing an afterthought. It actually needs to dictate how you make your arrangement. And I know that goes against the grain for a lot of us as creatives, but it's just the way it is. So please, please pay attention to this. I've learned this one the hard way, um, but now I have systems around my pricing. I use three different pricing strategies and I get excited about it actually. It's like a puzzle trying to figure out 
how to charge the right price. And we do pay attention to psychological factors, but that's the last box I check off when I'm double checking my pricing, okay? It's not the first. And I think a lot of florists get in the habit of making arrangements and just kind of doing this psychological pricing where it looks like this price. You know, the price of the flowers is what it is. Peonies are very expensive. Um, roses are expensive. Garden roses are very expensive. So um, if an arrangement has those, it is going to be expensive and the customer needs to know this. So sometimes we just have to explain this to the customer. And unfortunately, yes, a huge part of our job is going to be educating the public about the value and the cost of flowers. Number two is that I expanded way too quickly. So I ended up expanding into a full service flower shop. It was still super small, but I was offering everything from deliveries to walk-in to huge displays in the store to weddings and events. And I was stretched too thin. I only had, you know, some part-time employees that were helping out kind of on call and it was too much expansion too quickly and I didn't have the capital for this, okay? So unless you have investors or the capital, I really don't recommend doing that. I recommend doing kind of a by appointment bespoke studio, which is what I ended up um, transitioning into. Have your minimums, focus in on weddings and events. Now with the current economy, a lot of florists are turning towards doing deliveries, which makes a lot of sense. If somebody wants you to do something that doesn't make sense for your business, say no. Now that said, in the beginning, there are going to be some things you'll do for trade or work to build your portfolio. But honestly, don't let your customers talk you into doing something. Don't give your power away. Don't let, you know, when you start out, a lot of people are going to have ideas about what you should do for your business, or maybe we could collaborate in this way or team up for this. And like, if it's not in line with your business values and your vision for your own life and your business, because those two things need to be aligned, um, it's just not going to work. So while you do need to say yes to a lot in the beginning, please be strategic and thoughtful about it and ask yourself, does this fit in with my business? So. Um, you know, I expanded way too quickly. It ended up just being a total cash leak. So, and I used to be really embarrassed about this, um, but then I realized there's a lot of people <laughs> who make this mistake. And so now I'm very aligned with what my business goals are. You know, I have a lot of people that write and say, oh, why don't you do this? Or why don't you offer that? And I say, sorry, I'm not offering that. That's not in line with my business goals so and honestly I've tried a lot of those things and I know they don't work for me and what I want okay so there will be evolution in your business and there will be trial and error but please be specific about your niche and about your business model if you're curious about different flower business models I do have a video I'll put that up in the top right hand corner here um, and that's five different ways you can work with flowers as a career we're really lucky now because there's so many different ways you can work with flowers and you can incorporate them into like a different business model so flowers can just be one part of your business model right okay so I always recommend that um, so I hope that made sense for you. If you have any questions so far, if you've also experienced this, um, please leave a question or comment um, in the comment box below. I always love hearing um, some of your experiences. So number three, the, uh, one of the other big mistakes I made was trying to do everything myself, okay? And not delegating and not getting help with really high stress situations like installations and setting up weddings. You know, sometimes I would have one person to help, but um, I didn't set up my business in a way that could cover the cost of having people there to help me set up because those are really time sensitive events. So it's really important you have the help you need and also that you have help in other aspects of your business. like you know, accounting and paperwork and organizing and cleaning. Um, you really do need help with that. Floristry is such a physical job. There's so many time sensitive jobs. It's really important to have the help you need. Um, and set up your business in a way that works. Like if you like to work on your own, which I do, I found that out. Like I like to work on my own. So I ended up kind of restructuring my business 
so that I could work on my own with occasional help from contractors and freelancers who I'm really picky about who I work with. And I have a little roster now of people I can call when I need help. Um, but I also just really enjoy working on my own. And so I restructured my business and set it up in a way so that I can do that. So think about what you want on a personal level and then create a business kind of around that. Um, I hope that makes sense. And I hope by kind of sharing the mistakes that I've made um, as a florist that it helps you and inspires you to get some systems set up for your own business. Um, if you do have more questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments. I do have something fun for you. Um, if you haven't clicked on it already, it's a fun little checklist to help prepare you for a flower career. And it kind of, I noticed a lot of people are really overwhelmed when they're starting out. So this will help you clarify what you need to do and walk you through every little baby step you need to take to prepare for your floristry career. So I will put a link to the floristry checklist in the box below so you can download that. And then if you do want to watch more videos from me and flower tutorials that I share, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.